was telling you this morning that to master success is to have mastered failure. If you really want to be successful, go and master failure. And I also said to you, if you're scared of failure, you're scaring your success to failure. No matter how many times you get hit, you get up. Um, this is what I've done for almost 32 years full time in this country. Left everything. Everything my, my father wanted me to do. I left all the influence, the affluence, and I believed in this. And my wife will, I'm sure at times she probably looks at me and said, what the heck? Where is he coming from? Young people don't do what I did when I did it. They went out and be crazy. But I believed that this was what God has always called me to be. That community should be my university. And the message every year I like to ask God. So Lord, what is what are you doing 2020? Particularly at the end of the year, going to a new year. Also when I feel that there are pivotal times in a country's journey, I will go to God and ask. And at times he will ask me, what do you want? In the place of prayer. We just had an election. To some of you it was a surprise. To me it wasn't a surprise. Exactly everything I asked God for is what happened. And if you had me before, from Boris being mayor, I told him he would be prime minister before he was mayor. I told him he would be mayor when they said it was a joke. But I told him he would almost lose it before he becomes a prime minister. I told them Trump was going to be the next president before he was even elected as the representative for the Republican. I told them in this country that it's Brexit and not remain. And I gave them exactly what God told me before they even had the elections. I said something to you this morning as leaders. I said, you, when you are serving God, what breaks his heart must break your heart. Amen. And when you are serving God, you must be in the know. Because God expects his children to be in the know. Don't just follow the flow. I've shared it probably here before that if you ever go with the flow and you are not in the know, you will be blown like the snow. Hey. Snow is so light. The snow is so light, but today's society, we go with the flow. No, go in God's knowledge. Hallelujah. I was one of those who declared that this country should go into a hung parliament. Two years before we had the hung parliament with Clegg and Cameron because I was frustrated not having anybody that could have majority. Listen, the God we serve controls the world. He framed it. He put it together. That is who your father is. He wants to listen to you and do for you beyond what you can imagine or comprehend. Hallelujah. The thing with him is that he follows a process. And that process is what we don't like. And that process is what took that young lady six times, seven times of failing before you get there. No, she wasn't failing. She was learning to win. Hallelujah. She wasn't losing. She was learning to win. When I see anybody, I don't like using the word you fail or you lost. No, you are learning to win. You are, in a, you, are, you are being taught how to be the best you can. And so as I prayed this 2020, I was asking the Lord, what is the plan? One of the first things the Lord said to me, and I'm surprised the young lady used the word. The Lord said to me, power to make wealth and to teach you to profit with it. So too many of my children have wealth, but they are not working the wealth I've given them. They are not cultivating and tilling the wealth I've given them. And I heard when that young woman said, work. What is so I said, Lord, what is wealth? Ah. Because to many people, immediately is money. It's only money and gold. And God said, no. Nah. The very life you have is wealth. The abundant life that Jesus gave you is wealth. The contacts, the affluence, the influence you have is wealth. Hallelujah. And I want to start you up with somebody in scripture. And I'll give you scriptures that the Lord gave me where it specifically states that God is the one that gives you power to make wealth and also teaches you to profit with it. And why he could not do anything in the book of Genesis until there was man to till the ground. Because somebody had to what? Work it. 
If you've got the PowerPoint, I don't know if you've got it. You got it? I always like the story of this. Keep going. This man called Moses, he was born into a death sentence. How do you start your life? When the beginning of your life, there is already a death sentence to kill you. Every child like you, there is a sentence that they should be killed. So you are born into death sentence. What a way to start life. That your mother got so crazy and mad, she didn't know where to keep you safe, that she had to put you in a basket and put you in an open sea with alligators and all of those fish there. What was the mother of Moses thinking? At times when life hits you, you don't even know how to think straight. No, mothers, please help me. They're about to kill your child. And the best way you could keep your child safe, open basket and put the child on river Thames. <laughs> or if you are in my, from my country where I come in Nigeria, Babit. I mean, what are you thinking? How safe is that? But I'm saying something to you. When God has a purpose for your life, and God has invested wealth in your life, even when death comes near you or sickness, they have to bow and salute. Ah, no, no. You, they will sell you. Next slide. They will sell you. The sell and the fine. They will sell you to the place of your destiny. Because in the hands of God, you are wealth that needs to be worked. Even as a baby, you had to land in the hand of... It doesn't matter who the person is, whether they know your God or not. They are compelled by the one who created them to serve you. God says, walk the wealth I have given you. And this baby, keep going, then becomes what? A prince of Egypt. A prince of Egypt and also what? A murderer. Your lives will be full of ups and downs with the wealth that God has given you. But that's part of life. Ten years before, last year, Prince Charles gave me the MBE. Ten years before, I was challenging him. The way I challenged him, those in the room would have said to me, you ain't going to get anything from this family. I didn't go there to get anything. I went there because God said to me, they said you are the first person he wants to meet. They said he wants to have a private meeting with you. You told them you are not going to the meeting, except you are able to tell him what God has asked you to tell him. And until they agreed, I didn't go for the meeting. I went to the meeting, and I delivered what God wanted me to deliver. The whole room was shaking. They were panicking. I didn't care. I had to deliver what God Hallelujah. has sent me to do. I might not have seen him again, but I had to do what I did. It was against the status quo, but that was not the issue. The issue was I had a moment. And then when I met him 10 years later in Buckingham Palace last March, First thing he said to me is, obviously he remembered. He said, I'm happy you do what you do and that we're able to honor you this way. Amen. And like, you, like he said, for what I do, most times you don't get that kind of honor. Because yes, you're challenging the government, you're challenging law, you're challenging what is abnormal in a world that wants that abnormality. So you are not popular. But I don't need to be popular with men, but with God. Hallelujah. This Moses had wealth. Then from being a prince, he becomes a murderer. And then in the next slide, this Moses also becomes what? A shepherd. Somebody who was an architect building big things, now he's preaching architecture to sheep. That's how, when you're talking about the world God is talking about, you can be so much here and then come down just like that. But you haven't lost your learning to win. At times, there is a breaking for a making. In walking your wealth, God at times has to break you to make you. And so there was a groundbreaking moment for Moses. But only God knew that groundbreaking moment. The people of Israel for 400 years have been praying for a deliverer. But the deliverer was in their midst and they did not know it. Even the deliverer himself did not know himself. It was easy for God to have used Moses as an architect and done what he, what he wanted to do. As a prince in Egypt. But no, he had to send him out. A fugitive. A murderer. And then met him where he felt, I am finished. And let me talk about the wealth. What wealth did Moses have that God needed to work? The wealth that he had was in one of the most 
ridiculous ways that you can imagine. When the time came that God would send him to go and break ground and bring major thanksgiving to the children of Israel, what wealth did God give him? The Lord said, what is in your hand? The wealth in the hands of Moses that God needed to walk was not even a straight stick. It was a crooked stick. What is it that God has put in your hand that you continue to condemn and compare with somebody else's? And all God is saying is, that's the wealth in your hand. Use it. Condemning your wife, your husband, your house, your car, your shoe, your nose, your teeth. You condemn everything because it doesn't look like somebody else's. Uh, let me tell you something. Most times, success, in fact, even failure is an illusion. Your illusion of somebody else's success because you look at somebody else and you use their success to measure success. And because if you're not doing what they're doing, you call yourself failure. No. Success in the eyes of God is do what I've asked you to do. Use what I've given you. Oh, he's 30. He can do that. I am 50. So what? Joshua was ill. Joshua 31. Joshua was sick. He was frail. He was old. Fragile. And God came to him and said, ah, Joshua, you are so stricken in, age, in years. You are so old. And Joshua was probably saying, ah, thank God. He's come to take me home. And God said, but there is still much land to be, come on. He didn't say there's one more land. He said, you're old, you're stricken in age, but there's much land to possess. That means you're not done yet. There is wealth in your hand that you still need to what? To work. Many of us are in that situation whereby, rather than realize that the wealth that God wants you to work is already in your hands, but you keep looking at someone else. Moses was going to be sent to break gra deep new grounds in Egypt, major grounds, and all that was in his hand that God would use as wealth was a crooked stick. And through that crooked stick, he went, he battled, and he conquered. Look at him. God sending him on the vision and the commission, on the journey. The next slide. But Moses said to God, who am I that you should, that I should go before Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out? All of us say that many times to ourselves. Not me, someone else. Next slide. I would rather frighten you into your God-given establishment than flatter you into comfortable stagnation. If I have to scare you to be the best you can, I will scare you to be the best. Because somebody is waiting for you to be the best. Because when you become the best, you get, make them get better. And you become the catalyst for them. Next slide. He's still crying, like we all do. And God is saying, just work what I have given you. He says, I stammer. I met a South African young man, one of those people, one of my meetings with young people, and I said that you're waiting to have the eloquence of Paul, but all God needs is your stammer. The stammer of, you know, Moses. And this young man jumped up. He was, I was wondering why he jumped up so much. And he just began to scream there. When I brought him on the platform for interview, he said, Pastor, I, I, I thought he was joking. He had one of the strongest stammer and he was leading a powerful church, both in this country and I think in about 10 nations. He was so ashamed of his stammer. He was so ashamed of the way he spoke that he was angry with himself. But God was saying, that's the very thing I want to use. And when he speaks, you are shocked, even with the stammer. It, co it co controls and anoints him. God did not take away the stammer, but continued to use him in spite of the stammer. And all God was saying to him was, son, walk the wealth. His wealth was his stammer. The very thing that did not sound right was what God would use. God did not take it away, but God was using it. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Let's, let's keep going. Do you see the stick? Everything God will use him to do. What did Moses have to do? Walk the stick. What do you have in your hand? Put it on the floor. That was it. When he went before Pharaoh, let's keep going. 
What is it that God has given you? He will not establish you without making provision for your establishment. Be intentional and obedient. Be consistent and don't give up. It's a marathon with a sprint to the finish. To finish. Next slide. It's the word of God. It's not me who said it. God is the one who said, I am the Lord, the maker thereof. The Lord that formed it to establish it. Everything God formed, he established it. So you were formed to be established. That's why he's saying, work the wealth I've given you. Work it. I met a man who has set up so many Christian schools around the country and the world called um, Christian Education Europe. Arthur Roderick. When I met Arthur Roderick, about eight or seven children he has, he doesn't own a house. Even at his going to be 80, he still rents a house. But he, he has bought and set up so many Christian schools. He's not sitting down waiting that I will sort myself out first and secure a house before I fulfill what God has called me. I'm going to go and do what he has asked me to do. He's one of the most fulfilled and happiest men because many lives have been transformed because he worked the wealth that God has given him. I'm using practical things because some people will say, well, you know, Pastor, you might not understand. You know, I, I don't even have my papers in this country and whatever. Listen, any child of God, if you are where God wants you to be, paper or no paper, leg or no leg, you are where God wants you to be, walk what God has given you. When the time comes, he will give you everything that you need. No, 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 let me tell you, maybe you don't understand. I was a notorious young boy. And when I left my country, with, my father could send me to anywhere in the world, but I went on my own. I came on my own because I, I didn't want him. Ah. And when I came, I had no papers and he didn't know. I didn't even tell my father. Until I got here, my sister said, that boy landed here. <laughs> my father said, eh? he landed here like this. And my father, ah! He didn't tell me, he just said he was going. I didn't tell you, yes. I thought I was going, but I didn't know what God was sending me. I came here to show them in this country. But God showed up for me. <laughs> no, my, ask my, my, I have a big sister there. She said, she hear me? His brother, me and the brother, we were notorious. And then I thought I was plotting myself. God caught me. And he's caught me for 32 years. Hallelujah. And when the time was done, I was working full-time ministry with no identity. I did not exist. And people thought I was born here. Because the way I was working, you couldn't work that way. <laughs> Except you were born here. Hallelujah. But I know the one who had called me and sent me. And so I knew, uh, 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 let me, when he's ready, and at the appointed time, I never knew the home office when I got all my papers. I just used to hear Luna House and all those places. I never got there. The solicitor looked at me and said, you, I ha you have a record here. I've never seen anyone apply for their papers. And it's given with so much speed. I said, I've never seen it. And you just apply. You send for your passport in Nigeria. And we apply. And just like that. I said, I've never seen such a thing. I said, listen, when God is ready for you, I'm using practical things because people give too many excuses. Work what you have. I was not the most intelligent in school. When I want to be serious, I'll suddenly be second and first. And then when I don't want to be serious, I will be last. And my father was confused. <laughs> How can you be first one time and then suddenly you are here? I was one of the most quiet and shyest people that you can imagine. That what I'm doing today scared me, oh God Almighty. But when God is ready for you, all he needs is you take the responsibility and he will release the ability. Amen. Take responsibility for the thing he has given you and see him release what? Ability. The next slide. He's standing before kings. What, what, what is still in his hands? The stick. The stick that was within the sheep when he walked the sheep is still the stick that he's using to walk in front of prime ministers and, the, and, and, ro and royalty and president because that is the wealth. And he was, you can see the way he stood. Is he ashamed of it? He's standing. He's still stammering, but he's standing. Let me, Deuteronomy 8.18. The 
Deuteronomy 8, 18 is where God says, I am the God that gives you power to make wealth. So any wealth you have is not yours. I am the one that gives power to make wealth. That's what he told me in 2020. I want my children to walk the wealth I've given them. And he took me to Genesis 2, 5 to 7, where he said, I could not let the shrubs come out of the land or trees or plants come out because there was no man to till it. It was after God had created man, somebody to walk it, then he allowed those things to go. That shows how important and key you are to God. Wherever God has placed you, he needs you to walk the wealth Amen. that he provides to you and around you. And so when he said power to make wealth, he said, by the way, I must also teach you because it's not just to have the power to make the wealth, you must be fruitful with it. You must multiply it. And then that's when he took me to Isaiah 48 verse 17. And in that same 48, 17 again, he says, and I am the God that teaches you to profit. <sighs> he not only gives you the power for the wealth, he said, I will also teach you what? To profit. So church, 2020, like they will say in the opticians, 2020 vision. For 2020. Your spiritual vision must be so sound. That that very situation you are seeing that seems so hopeless, that scares you so much, continue to work it. Parents, your children are wealth in your hands. Some will make it easy, some will make it hard. Keep working it. And at times, keep working it means that you have to be strong with them. You have to be strict with them. You have to face and do what you have to do. But keep working it. Because one day it will turn around. Aye, my son give me some challenges. That boy that is architect now. Chai, chai, chai. Well, you know, I also did a bit for my parents. So what goes around comes. <laughs> so when he begins to trouble me at times, I'll say, Father God, I just cool down. Have mercy. And I will. <laughs> so I never respond to him in anger. I always try and find time to calm down. To respond, even as upset I am, I respond in love. We're parties now. We're buddies. We talk. We do anything. We do that, but I, at a point, it was hard. I could not afford. You feel like giving up. You will do some things at times, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> sorry to use my language. <laughs> if I get you, and I just, God, is, mm -mm, that's not the way. Because let me tell you something. God never beats us or disciplines us in anger. Out of what? Love. The skills that God has given you are wealth in your hands. The connections he has given you is wealth. Your place of work is wealth. Your career is wealth. Your business is wealth. Your beauty is wealth. Your health is wealth. Walk it and multiply it. That's what he saying. Walk what you have. There was a man called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a small statured man. He was so small, but they said he was wealthy. He was rich. He was rich and he tried to be kind. But there was something about that man. He heard about Jesus. As wealthy as he believed he was, he had somebody wealthy I was around. And he began to say, I must see this person. Some of us are so poor that when you will hear there's a wealthy person or somebody going about, you don't still care. The poverty has so made you blind. That riches pass and you can't even smell it. It's a rich person that you say, I don't care. I already have wealth. So who else? But he was saying, I need to see that man. This year, 2020, I'm praying that you have a Zacchaeus moment. Amen. A moment whereby no matter what the wealth and riches you are, as you seek God, it's not you that will first see him. He will see you. Amen. When you go and read about Zacchaeus in Luke 19, he was going to see Jesus, but because he was small... Even his wealth could not give him just visibility of Jesus. They said he went to climb a tree. I must see this Jesus. And where he was climbing a tree, because he was also small in Zacchaeus to see Jesus, Jesus was the first one who saw him. The Bible says, and Jesus saw him and called him. Ah, and said, ah, Zacchaeus, come down. This day, the man only wanted to see him. Jesus said, this day is the day of your salvation. I am going to come into your house and abide with you. Oh, my God. As you're seeking him in this 2020, he will be the one that will see you. Yeah. 
And he will say, come down. Amen. Because today is the day of your what? Of your salvation. I'm coming into your home, into your family, into your situation to dwell with you. The man thought he had wealth. God had to show him another level of what the true wealth is. But I want to finish by saying this. Isaiah 11, 1 to 4. Because all what I've said to you, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, he says in Zechariah. But in Isaiah, I want you to pray this prayer for yourself every day of 2020. As you walk the wealth, Pray that the Spirit of God will rest upon you. The Spirit of God will what? Rest upon you. That means the Spirit of God will not be a visitor. It will be what? It will abide. Permanent resident with you. It says the Spirit of God rests upon you. And what are the Spirit you spoke about? The Spirit of wisdom and of understanding. Of counsel and of what? Might. Of knowledge and the fear of God. And that you will delight in the fear of God. Now the one I like is the verse 4. That your judgment calls will not be based on what you see or what you hear, but based on righteousness, what is right. And that your decisions will not be based on what you see or what you hear, but based on what is just. Do you realize that one of the reasons why we fail in working our wealth is we base everything on what we see and hear. But the Bible is saying that's not the way you should do it. You should look at the situation. You should assess it based on the wisdom the understanding, the counsel, the might, the knowledge, and the fear of God. And so when you make judgment, it's based on what is right, righteous. When you make decision, it's based on what is just, justice. So that way, no matter what that decision is, once you do it, you know you got it right. Because the Spirit of God does what? Rest upon you. And that means most of the time, you will do things against the status quo. People will look at you and be wondering, why would God ask me to do this? Just go and do it. I learned in my journey, because I like influence over prominence. And then the Lord said to me, however, son, the size of your influence is only dependent on the size of your obedience to me. If you want your influence to be big, then let your obedience be big. And I looked at everyone that God has used. Their influence was only as big as their obedience to God. I'm asking you in 2020, I've told you what God has put in my heart. The wealth he has given you, walk it. If it is manners that is the wealth you have, walk those manners. They will do what? They will do what? Somebody spotted that young girl's what? wealth. What she could not see. Somebody said it and was saying to her, walk this wealth. Walk this wealth. And then she dared to do what? To walk the wealth. And she had wisdom to know that having failed six times, I must still what? Continue to go. And look at her today now. She's, at, she's, she's addressing many audiences. That woman who saw her saw beyond whatever her current situation was. And too many times we judge everything about what we see now. That situation that looks like what it is now will not be like that forever. Work it and trust God. And see what he can do. My prayer is a simple prayer for you. If you will bow your heads down. Lord, in the year 2020, as I have come to share with my people in this house, give every one of us your 2020 vision for the year 2020. And Lord, help us, as you give us power to make wealth, help us to walk the wealth and teach us to profit with it. And in all of that, Lord, let your spirit rest upon us, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, of knowledge and of the fear of God, of counsel and of might. That our judgment calls will be based on righteousness and our decisions will be based on justice. So that at the end of the day, your name and your name alone will be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Tell somebody next to you, walk the wealth. Walk the wealth. God bless you.